Before we get into today's episode, we wanted to let you know about another podcast you may want to check out, The Sales Podcast with Wes Schaefer. Wes, who's known as The Sales Whisperer, helps salespeople everywhere generate more inbound sales that close faster, easier, at higher margins, with less stress, and more fun. Our favorite episode on his show is titled, Why You Need to Build for the Next Recession. Check it out and find The Sales Podcast wherever you do your podcast listening. All right, let's get into the show. Hello, and welcome to the B2B Growth Show Monthly Book Talk. I'm Douglas Burdett, host of the Marketing Book Podcast, where each week I publish an interview with the author of a new marketing or sales book to help my listeners succeed in the quickly changing world of marketing and sales. And joining me is my friend James Muir, author of The Perfect Close, The Secret to Closing Sales, The Best-Selling Practices and Techniques for Closing the Deal. In this monthly episode of the B2B Growth Show, we recap some of the key ideas from the marketing and sales books that were recently featured on the Marketing Book Podcast. Now, I read every book featured on the Marketing Book Podcast, but James reads even more books than I do, and he listens to every episode of the Marketing Book Podcast. So I'm delighted that he can join me. And if either of us can recommend any marketing or sales books or other resources for whatever situation you find yourself in, please feel free to connect with us on LinkedIn, where we can chat and we'll do our best to point you in the right direction and maybe even save you some time. James, welcome back to the B2B Growth Show Book Talk. Thank you, Douglas. You know I'm a fan. In this episode, we're going to talk about four recent books featured on the Marketing Book Podcast, which are Sales Truth, Debunk the Myths, Apply Powerful Principles, Win More New Sales by Mike Weinberg. Also, the seventh level, Transform Your Business Through Meaningful Engagement with Your Customers and Employees by Amanda Slavin. Also, Same Side Selling, How Integrity and Collaboration Drives Extraordinary Results for Sellers and Buyers by Ian Altman. And finally, Content-Based Networking, How to Instantly Connect with Anyone You Want to Know by James Carberry. So, on to the books. First up, we've got Sales Truth, Debunk the Myths, Apply Powerful Principles, Win More New Sales by Mike Weinberg. And I'm a huge fan of Mike Weinberg. Of course, he's a friend and all of his books are excellent and this book is no exception. So, give us a lowdown on Mike Weinberg's Sales Truth. Well, and I'm a big Mike Weinberg fan too and I'd like to think I'm a friend of his and he was so pleased with this interview that he's going to give me his new Porsche 911 <laughs> S with the power kit. Yeah, he was, he was, well, he didn't actually say that, James, but, I but could tell. yeah, I, I, there was some, there was some, definitely some, uh, some host love, you know, heading my way. Now, what I should say is, uh, so on the in Marketing Book Podcast, it's been about five years now, over five years, about 270 or so interviews. And Mike Weinberg was the very first author of a sales book that I ever had on the podcast. And I've since gone on to have about oh, 30 or 40 more, including yourself. And right. there's not been a bad sales book on the show. And my belief is that marketers should be reading sales books in addition to marketing books for a variety of reasons. And I think uh, marketers, the more they understand about sales, the more effective they are as, as marketers. So the first book was on uh, was called New Sales Simplify, which I continue to recommend That's to right. people. And this book is, if anyone here has ever seen the movie Zoolander, where that character played by Will Ferrell makes a proclamation. He says something like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <laughs> That's what you need to think of. Uh, he, Mike Weinberg does not look like Zoolander or does not look like <laughs> that guy. Mike's a very you know, good looking guy. Uh, but he's about had it with all of these self-styled sales gurus who are just so patently wrong <laughs> About sales, and I just I, I, so I just love this book, and I just wanted to I just wanted to quote two things from it, which you would always do, and one is he says, despite what you hear and read from today's trendiest self-proclaimed thought leaders, I have never seen a salesperson or sales team fail because they lack a recently invented sales tool, or because they had not yet adopted a newly created sales process, and then he goes on to say. In chapter two, the title of chapter two is Be Very Wary of the Nouveau Experts and False Teachers. And then the first paragraph is, I did not want to write this chapter, but my <laughs> eyes and my conscience compelled me to. My intention here is not to be mean-spirited. It is simply to point out the bizarre inconsistencies between what some modern popular sales experts 
are proclaiming and what anyone who has succeeded in sales for any length of time has successfully led a sales organization or has a shred of common sense knows is true. Nobody calls BS on what it takes to succeed in sales and all the charlatans out there than Mike Weinberg. And it's, Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah the, the whole first, what, quarter, third of the book is is debunking all those myths and he does it masterfully. So if you're one of those lotus eaters that's got caught up in that whole social media, all that stuff yes. where they're selling some new thing, he debunks that uh, quite thoroughly, I might add. Yeah. And also he's, you know, he's not to say that he's not for all the things that that work well. In other words, the HubSpot for years was, there was some belief. I, I, they have a whole floor of outbound sales prospecting people, okay? But they've popularized amongst, with other, amongst other companies the idea of creating really helpful, useful content to draw a lot of people to you. But that's not, you know, <laughs> I heard leads don't close themselves. You still have to have salespeople doing, uh, following a sales process and uh, all, you know, the, the research shows that. And, in addition to those two points about you don't need the latest tool, you don't need the latest whatever this you know sales process is, and the fact that you should be very wary of what people are saying. There are some basics to succeeding in sales, and he tells you what they are, and they're probably not a big surprise, but man, does he make it clear. And there was one other thing from the towards the end of the book I just wanted to quote because, uh, as you can imagine, this is just one of my favorite books. And that's a in chapter 14. The title is you most certainly can win with an older product or a higher price. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he demonstrates it. Yes. I mean, really great example in there. <laughs> and so he talks about how in so many companies he consults with the sales team are saying, no, we just need to drop the price. We could just get more. We could just get more sales. If we had more price. And he has to go on and explain, well, if we drop the price, we don't need you. <laughs> exactly. So, but he's, I mean, he's a lovable guy, even if he doesn't end up giving me that uh, Porsche 911, but <laughs> he just lays this out and, and he does it in a way where there's no uh, daylight left. There's no, there's no place to run. You know, he just, he really lays it out. Yeah, there's actually some new material in here too for those of that think that, that just knowing that the basics is what delivers is that, and I don't want to, I'm not going to ruin it. You got to read the book to get it, but he's, he calls it money phrase. And if you're involved in any kind of outbound prospecting whatsoever, just that one phrase is probably worth a thousand times the price of the book when, when, when you're out there engaging. So definitely well worth the read. His um, takeaway, if you recall on this one, was just to master the basics. Like you said, right? Targeting, messaging, and time management are the key focus areas. And that's because that's where all the leverage is. And he really lays it out straight in this book. And that's one of the reasons that I love all of his books so much is he's very much like that. It's my, I, my opinion, it would be that every salesperson should read this book. It's that good. Yes. Yeah, so and let me add to that. Uh, when you talk about the money phrase, it's well worth the price of the book. There's this other book that I read a few years ago called, uh, I think it's called The Perfect Sale. Uh, the Perfect Close. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's this one phrase in it that I, you can't believe how well it works. And I'm not going to tell the listener what it is. You got to buy the perfect clothes and read it. But here's the deal. You have to read the book and understand to understand all that you have to do to make sure that phrase actually works. But it's just, it was uh, simplicity uh, defined. Yep, no doubt. Both of those have that in common. And I'll take that because Mike is awesome. Yeah. All right. So next up, we've got the seventh level. Transform Your Business Through Meaningful Engagement with Your Customers and Employees by Amanda Slavin. So this book speaks to the importance and structure of meaningful engagement with customers and employees. So tell us a little bit about the seventh level. So I should say that she ended up giving birth just a few days later after the interview. So I'm <laughs> like have a, that effect on people? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I like to think of myself as a midwife. Put her uh, into, uh, that's <laughs> right. That's that right. Interview. Yes. I induce labor, uh, just, uh, you know, and, and I think she would probably think the interview was more painful than the birth. Uh, she gave <laughs> a few days later and her son was supposed to be born on the seventh of that month. And I just thought, that's so great that your son, who's not even born yet, is trying to reinforce your brand of the seventh level. <laughs> but what she talks about here is a very important idea, and that is that engagement with customers and employees is not a binary choice. It's not they're engaged or they're not engaged. She includes all these metrics for, let's talk about customers. How engaged are your customers? And if you start thinking of it that way, and she's got these seven levels, even if you only get to the fourth level, <laughs> you're going to be about three times better than your mm-hmm. competition. And there are these different 
you know, gradations of how, just how engaged are your customers with you? And she shows you how to go about doing that and uh, what they mean. And she gives examples uh, from out there. And listener, I don't want you to think James put me up to this, but this also reminds me of the perfect close because <laughs> now, now he's blushing. But there, there's a certain thread through that book. And I promise we won't talk about his book ever again in any of these episodes. But if you're, if you're, as you're selling, if there is no engagement where the customer is or the prospect is sticking their neck out or hitting the ball back to you or, or doing anything, you're not really making any progress. Yes, right. You could, and you could be doing that for a year or 18 months and you could look back and go, you know what? I really never asked them to actually do anything. <laughs> I, I never right. made sure they were engaged. Okay. Enough about James Muir. Okay. So she talks about that. And if you, you can gauge your customers, not, not only will they start to buy more, they'll start to advocate more for you, which is much more powerful than anything you can say about your own company. I think she also mentions uh, that knowing the customer is so critical to meaningful engagement. And Amanda's one takeaway was to identify what makes you special and then to go about that way uh, in a way to help and serve others. So a very noble cause. And uh, she didn't say this, but the one thing I think that people could do to put those things into action is just to go to their website. There's a, a phenomenal list of uh, tools that are there available for free that's pretty extensive. So great yeah. book. Well oh, worth let me add to that, James. She also, I think she's a board, she's an advisor to HubSpot. And on the HubSpot Academy website, they built a whole course around about how to do this engagement that everybody should go check out. Outstanding. Yep. All right. So next up, we've got Same Side Selling, How Integrity and Collaboration Drives Extraordinary Results for Sellers and Buyers by Ian Altman. And again, I'm a big fan of Ian Altman's also. And uh, I love the simplicity and the clarity which with he applies to the selling process. I mean, he's really got a knack for taking things down to the simplest level. Um, so tell us a little bit about the second edition of Same Side Selling. Well, this is like having two grand slams in, in one baseball game. I think so. Yeah. Sorry to all you folks outside the, the baseball playing world. I know Europeans hate it when we talk about baseball, but mm, we'll talk about cricket or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or uh, uh, Foot, football, or, or football, yeah. 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 Wink, wink. So this is, like I said, I've had so many books about sales. This is one of my all-time favorites. This is the second edition. It just came out, and there's so much to talk about. But as you said, there's such simplicity. And he's been the CEO of companies. He's been a salesperson. He's been really successful. I'm not sure he even needs to write these books anymore. Mm -mm. But no. it's so he's just, he just wants to help everybody. One of the many many interesting ideas in the book is that to be successful in sales now, we have to stop playing games. And he talks about this arms race of gaming that goes on between the seller and the buyer. Instead, literally and figuratively, you need to get on the same side of the table as the person mm -hmm. you're selling to. And you have to be brutally honest with your prospects and tell them that you may in fact not be a good fit for them. And by doing so, your credibility will rise. Okay. But to do that, you have to determine who you in fact are a good fit for mm -hmm. and who your ideal customers are and stop chasing every prospect that has a pulse or even doesn't have a pulse. He goes into some length about how it costly it is to actually go after the wrong kinds of customers and how it affects your company when you're selling to non-ideal clients. So really outstanding content in that yeah. area. And actually there's another, there's so many great ones, but another thing that he talks about in the book, kind of like we were talking about just now about uh, Mike Weinberg's book is always sell value, not price. If you can't find the value, <laughs> I'm not sure you're going to make much of a sale there. And he's got a, a clever approach of how to ask questions to the client in a way that will cause the client to actually sell themselves on solving the problem, yeah. right? Without and, and, and without feeling manipulated. Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. In fact, I, I just uh, I envy the simplicity at which he's applied the entire sales process here. It's just so great. I remember reading the first edition and thinking how phenomenal it was. I went and bought everything off of his website, and then now the second edition. I'm in the, the third reading of the second edition of it. It's just that great. Yeah, and there was actually a workbook that, that comes with it, which you can buy separately or contact Ian. He might just send you one. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's that kind of guy. And in the workbook, you open it up, and it's you know page after page of this framework for asking discovery questions with a prospect. But it, it's in the way that he explains in the book where you really are just helping. 
And uh, it actually probably even generates more uh, referrals when you determine, hey, you know what? We're not a fit, but here's what I think you do need. And here's how I know it's good. Even before I did my interview with him, I was already using it when prospects would call mm-hmm. up and wanted to talk. And it's like, damn, Altman, this thing really does work well. And it's these people so love it. I know. And I was, I was reading through it. I'm like, I'm not sure you could condense as much great material in such a small amount of space as he's done. It's just so simple, right? That's Occam's razor applied to sales. And so I remember as I was reading the second edition, thinking, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, right? All these things that I had forgotten from before. It's just so, so good. You know, one other thing, James, sorry to interrupt. He wrote this with another fellow, Jack Quarles. That's right. And Jack is a professional buyer. In other words, a, a procurement person. And he really keeps Ian honest in the book saying, no, this is what buyers, this is what's keeping me up at night. I buy for a living. And he even, uh, Ian talked about how there was one company that is a big procurement company. They, they, buy, they buy a lot of stuff. They sent a copy of this to every vendor <laughs> and said, <laughs> if you want to sell more to us, do what's in this book. I could wow. not believe that. What a validation though, right? And that's, you know, you've written a authentic selling or a marketing book when you could send that book to your client and your client says, yes, this is how we want you to do it, right? So <laughs> phenomenal. It's, it's a lot of books too. We, we can say so much about this book. His, his big takeaway here is kind of what you mentioned at the beginning, which is that, you know, the buyer and the seller relationship doesn't really have to be adversarial. In fact, it's better when it's not and you're both on the same side. And then what his recommendation was is, uh, that you could put into action right away is just to focus on your problems that you solve, right? That defines who your market is rather than your solutions. And then ask the kind of questions that cause customers can convince themselves that that problem is worth solving. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, 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 the whole thing is just ingenious. I, I really love the first edition of this and this second edition is well worth the 30% or more added content that he's added to it. It's really just phenomenal. Well, you know what else? If you are the owner of a Kindle version of his first book, he gives you the second one for free. I know. I got mine for free. (laughs) What a deal, right? Today's growth story is about Matillion, an industry-leading provider of cloud-based data integration solutions for platforms like Amazon, Snowflake, and Google BigQuery. Even though Matillion is a high-profiled company, they needed to increase their organic traffic and conversions. So they turned to Directive. The Directive team grew Matillion's digital presence by concentrating on brand awareness, link building, and conversion rate optimization, leading to more visitors and longer time spent on Matillion's pages. Matillion saw a 2,750% increase in MQLs in just a single quarter. Not only that, organic conversions hit 164% compared to the previous quarter. And if you want to learn how to drive these kinds of results, you need to check out their Digital Marketing Course Institute. The Institute course teaches you step-by-step, click-by-click, all the necessary skills required to launch your own successful digital marketing campaigns. Sign up today at directiveconsulting.com slash institute and to get your first four lessons completely free. Once again, that's directiveconsulting.com slash institute to get four free lessons. All right, let's get back to the show. All right, well, last up, we've got Content-Based Networking, How to Instantly Connect with Anyone You Want to Know by James Carberry. And this book is about using content to develop relationships. And it's it's kind of how you and I met. So tell us a little bit about James Carberry and Content-Based Networking. Sure. Well, there's this guy named James Carberry, and he owns a company called Sweetfish Media. And they produce business-to-business podcast for companies. And he's also got another podcast that's called, uh, what is it? I think it's the B2B Growth Show. Mm-hmm. Is that is that the one he does? I, yeah. I heard of it, yes. I don't know. He's kind of slacking <laughs> off though because he, he lets these knuckleheads come on and do guest, you know, guest episodes like these two guys that come on once a month. What a yawner. They talk about <laughs> books. Anyway, James Carberry This is maybe one episode he will listen to because we're talking about him. But after the interview, he said, you know, my wife's just amazing. She can get me to do anything. Well, you know why I figured out? She's a dolphin trainer at Disney World. What do you think? (laughs) Okay, I'll be here all week, folks. Sorry, James. Just had to put a little little comedy humor in there. So this book is like no other one that I've had on the podcast uh, before. And he talks about how... 
first off, it's all about relationships. And I know we've all heard that, but he gets you in the book to think about what has happened, what have you done in business without having some kind of relationship? You know, you think about it, it's, it's all about the relationships. And we all want to build relationships with the right people that we want to work with, that we can help, we can sell to, and so forth. It's becoming harder and harder to build those relationships. Uh, you know, the buyer-seller dance we're talking about, and, uh, you know, we don't want to be, we're getting so many messages now, we don't want to be bothered, we're overwhelmed. And what he talks about is how one way to do that is to create content with the people you want to build relationships with. Mm-hmm. Now, could that be your prospects? Maybe. But it's also people that you want to be connected with anyway. So what they did, and they've done over a thousand episodes of the podcast that you, dear listener, are listening to right now. And what they did is they did a lot of interviews. They did them with salespeople initially and realized that wasn't quite the right target. And then they were targeting CMOs. And then they realized that wasn't quite right either, but they still learned a lot and they had, they're building a great show. And then they focused on VPs of marketing. And so they would interview all these VPs of marketing and most of them would hire them, but they would say, what, what do you guys do? This has been a great interview. I appreciate you sharing it with your audience. They say, well, we produce business to business uh, podcasts. And so he was building relationships with people primarily that could refer business to him or that liked mm-hmm. him and trusted him. And what they were doing, though, is they weren't trying to sell. <laughs> they were putting the spotlight on these guests. And it was great for the guests because it helped them with their career. It made them look good to their company. It made it look mm-hmm. good to their prospects. He talks about how Oprah is the queen of this because her success, and trust me, she's had some success. She's a billionaire. Mm-hmm. She's so good at putting the spotlight on her guests. And the other thing he talks about is that you need to be practical. It has to be practical information, not talking about that person so much or about James and what they do. You're not going to listen to episodes, earlier episodes, particularly of this podcast, where they're talking all about themselves, which is the natural inclination of of people. So what you're doing is you're creating this content. Okay, so what do we mean by creating content? Like, let's say it doesn't have to be a podcast. It doesn't have to be a blog. He talks about this one person who had graduated from a good uh, culinary institute, and they wanted to build a relationship with all the leading chefs in a, a certain city. So what he did is he started this Instagram series where about all what all the different chefs were doing. And of course, it was beautiful to look at. And mm-hmm. all the chefs became interested in and they got to know it and it really made the chefs look good. Well, after a while, he got in with these folks and became you know acquainted with them. And they were able to, he was able to then find out about some uh, opening positions at a great restaurant where this guy wanted to start his career. And he gives example after example of that type of, of thing. So there is, there's some phenomenal stories in this book, in this book. It's very, um, the thing I really loved about this is how he shifts relationships, which I mean, at first, of course, he talks about how important they are, but then he kind of shifts to being more intentional about creating the relationships that you want. I mean, I think he even calls it reverse engineering relationships. Right. Uh, Right. So like, for instance, if I were to do it right, and I don't, I do a lot of things wrong, James Muir, but I guess you already knew that. But anyway, so I do a podcast where I'm interviewing authors of new marketing and sales books. People like, well, like James Muir. Well, the problem is I don't sell anything to authors. <laughs> Maybe I should. I should start that a business. would worked out a little better, right? Yeah, so I'm not doing it right. So, dear listener, please, don't, don't make children, don't make the mistakes your father had. <laughs> but it's the sort of thing where like, for instance, my firm, you know, we want to, we focus on manufacturers, industrial companies. Well, and of course, James Muir is urging me to do this. He says, you know, you should be doing a podcast where you interview the heads of sales for these industrial or, or manufacturing companies. I'm thinking, yeah, it's that, that would be an example of doing it right or creating a blog series or writing a book, any kind of content that you can create. And the other great advice that he had was, No piece of content stands on its own. You can atomize all of the content and and create many other types of things. And I'll give you an example. So I do this interview with these authors on my show. And then once a month, you and I get on here and cut up a bit. And we talk about the recent books that were on the show and some of the the key learning. So I'm sort of repurposing content. But that point was in there along with, with many others. Yeah, and this framework that he gives is very simple, right? It's goals, people, content. That's it, 
right? Very, very simplistic. His uh, his takeaway here was just to think about the, the single person that you would like to meet and just reach out. That's simple, right? So, and that's one of the things I really liked about this book. And actually almost all the books that are in this, this month's uh, collection is the simplicity and the intentionality of it. I mean, the strategies absolutely work and they're definitely well worth applying. So for me, this was one of the best collections of books that we've had on sales anyway, uh, inside of a single month. So excellent collection. Tell oh, us what great. Books- the pressure's on now. Yeah, that's right. So tell us what new books you've got coming up on the Marketing Book Podcast. Okay. Uh, and this was the next episode of the B2B Growth Show Book Talk. We will be talking about The Catalyst, How to Change Anyone's Mind by Jonah Berger. The Iconist, The Art and Science of Standing Out by Jamie Mustard. Create Togetherness, Transform Sales and Marketing to Exceed Modern Buyers' Expectations and Increase Revenue by Jeff Davis, and Think, Do, Say, How to Seize Attention and Build Trust in a Busy, Busy World by Ron Tite. And that's it for this month's B2B Growth Show Book Talk. To learn more about the Marketing Book Podcast, visit marketingbookpodcast.com. And to learn more about James and his excellent book, The Perfect Close, in fact, let me talk some more about that book. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Visit Pure Muir, which is spelled P-U-R-E-M-U-I-R dot com. And James, where are you going to be speaking in the near future in case uh, listeners might want to meet up with you? I'll be speaking at uh, the Outbound Sales Conference in Atlanta at the Georgia World Congress Center. And there's a number of other excellent speakers out there. You'd recognize uh, Anthony Arena, who's been on the show, uh, Victor Antonio, also Mark Hunter, who's been on the show, and of course, Jeb Blunt, who's been on the show. So an excellent list of speakers there in, uh, over those three days. I've been um, to that conference twice. And I think there's only been three years of it. If you only go to one sales conference, go to that one. And I think smart marketers should be going to that conference. It it is really the greatest sales show on earth. I mean, it is a phenomenal collection of speakers and we only covered a couple of them. On July 10th, I'll actually be delivering a keynote at the Institute for Excellence in Sales in Washington, D.C. Uh, Fred Diamond kind of runs that. And then- Well, maybe you can get Ian Altman to attend. He lives nearby. I know. (laughs) And on September 8th through the 10th, I'll be speaking at the Relationship Marketing Grand Summit in Dallas, Texas. So looking forward to that as well. This will be the second time for that one. Excellent. So if you are in Ohio or anywhere near there or can get there, please plan to join me at Interact Ohio, the digital marketing conference in Columbus on the campus of Ohio State. On May 18th and 19th, I'll be speaking about three big ideas from over 270 five marketing and sales books every (laughs) marketer needs to know. You know what? I might even throw in a couple of extra ideas because I want to over deliver. And I have a discount code they gave me, which I can send anyone who wants it. And I don't make any money off of it, but trust me, it's enough for you to buy me several really nice uh, single malt scotches Mm -hmm. uh, afterwards. And so for details and to register, go to interactohio.com. Dot com. And as I mentioned earlier, if either of us can recommend a specific sales or marketing book or other resources for whatever situation you find yourself in, connect with us on LinkedIn where we can chat and we'll do our best to get you pointed in the right direction. And remember, keep learning because these days the big learners are the big earners. I hate it when podcasts incessantly ask their listeners for reviews, but I get why they do it because reviews are enormously helpful when you're trying to grow a podcast audience. So here's what we decided to do. If you leave a review for B2B Growth and Apple Podcasts and email me a screenshot of the review to james at sweetfishmedia.com, I'll send you a signed copy of my new book, Content-Based Networking, How to Instantly Connect with Anyone You Want to Know. We get a review, you get a free book. We both win.